What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to properly break out of nested loops in python so let us get right into it All right, so for the complete beginner's shield, let us get started with the very basics first. Now, a nested loop is just a loop inside of another loop. So for example, we might have something like for i in range 10. And then inside of that loop, this one would be the outer loop. Inside of that loop, we have the inner loop, the second loop, which could be for j in range 20, for example. Now, maybe you know about the break statement, the break statement breaks out of a loop. So it just quits the loop. If I just have one loop, for example, for i in range 10, I could say something like if i equals five, break out of the loop. So when the condition is met, I would break out of this loop, it would quit the loop. And we can see that this happens by just printing i with each iteration, even though the loop should go up until nine here, it goes only up until five, because we quit the loop, we break out of the loop using the break statement. There's also the statement continue. And then it, it would make sense to print after the condition here, continue just skips the current iteration. So in this case, you would see 01234, no five, and then 6789, because we continued after this condition, if i equals five, so it skipped the iteration, it did not execute the code that comes after it. That's the basic idea of breaking out of the loop and continuing um, in a loop. Now, back to the nested loop for j in range 20, for example, if I say something like if j equals, uh, or maybe let's say if i plus j equals 10, with two equal signs here, if that is my condition, and I break when this happens, what happens is actually I only break out of the inner loop. So let's go ahead here and print using the f string feature. Let's print a value of i and let's print a value of j to see what happens here. And you can see here, or maybe we should also print here, condition met breaking out of the loop, just so we know when this happens. And you can see it happens on multiple occasions. So first of all, it happens when i equals zero and j equals 10, because then of course the sum is 10 and it breaks out of the loop. And it happens all the time here. And you can see that the only thing that happens is we start counting j. So you can see here it's met when i is three and j is seven because three plus seven is 10. And then it continues with i equals four. So we're actually just breaking out of the inner loop. We're breaking out of this inner construct uh, constructed loop here. And if I set this to five, you can see it happens the first time here when six uh, when i equals six and j equals four. And then it continues with i equals seven, then it breaks again when j equals three, and so on and so forth. Let's say now our goal is to break completely the complete loop construction here or the complete loop structure here, once the sum is 10. So it would say that when i equals six and j equals four, that's the first time that the sum equals 10. In this case, I want to break the entire loop. Uh, so the outer loop, so to say, how do I do this? What's the best practice way to do this? Now, of course, you can come up with some variable, something like done equals false. And then after each iteration, uh, you would check if done, then break. And then you would say something like here break, but before that said done to true. This, of course, would work. I mean, I think it would work. There you go. It works. But that's not the best practice way to do it. This is not how you should do it as a professional programmer. How you should do it is with the else statement of the for loop. And this is something that a lot of people don't know that exists. I have a video on it already on this channel. What you can do in a for loop is you can attach an else branch here. And this else branch basically is executed when you don't break out of the loop. So the idea is that here I have something I'm going to pass for now. So I'm going to leave this empty. The idea is you have this full loop here and it could happen that you break out of it, but it could also happen that you don't break out of it. Now, if you break out of the full loop, what happens is you break out of it and then you continue with the rest of the code down here. So this would be a rest of code. So here you have the rest of the code. So you execute the full loop, you break out of it at some point, you don't execute this else branch and you continue with the rest of the code. If you don't break out of this for loop, what happens is since you didn't break out of it, you're going to execute whatever is part of the else uh, branch here, and then you're going to continue with the rest of the code. 
So the idea is now to if we break out of this inner loop, we also want to break out of the outer loop. How do we do that? Well, by just saying, if I break out of it, I'm not going to execute this. So here I should have something that prevents me from executing the next code here because here I'm going to break now. So as of right now, we would break every time because what happens is we execute the full loop, maybe we break out of it, maybe not. In the end, we break out of the outer loop. The idea now is to have something in the else branch, which prevents me from breaking out in the case I didn't break out in the inner loop. I hope this doesn't get too complicated. And the solution here is to just use a continue statement. So now if you think about it, what happens is we go through the inner loop. If we don't break out of the loop, what happens is we jump into the else branch and we continue with the next iteration. Only if we break out of this loop, we don't execute this continue statement and we reach this break statement, meaning that this inner break causes us to reach the outer break. So calling break here also calls break here and breaks the outer loop. That is the professional structure, the best practice structure to break out of the outer loop by breaking out of the inner loop. And now you will see that when I run this, we only get this condition met once because then the outer loop is broken as well. So what would be a practical use case of this? So when would I actually want to do this? Uh, there are many cases I had this recently because I had to process URLs and I had to or actually not URLs, I had to process search queries. And I had to to I had pretty long search queries and the full search query oftentimes didn't yield a result in the search engine that I was scraping. And because of that, I had to reduce it word by word. And um, with that reduction, I had to try it again. And inside of that, I had a retry loop. So I had a loop in a loop in a loop. And when something was found, I wanted to break out of the outer loop. So you don't need to understand the exact scenario here. What I'm saying is that there are actual use cases. And one simple use case that I'm going to show you here is, let's say you have a matrix and a matrix could not just be a matrix of numbers, it could be just a multi dimensional array of something, some value strings, uh, URLs, objects, whatever you have just a collection, a multi dimensional collection of values. In this case, now we would have a list of lists. And then we would have here just some values. So we would have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16. Those are just some values. And now we're looking for something. Of course, the matrix that you would be looking at would be way larger and you cannot really um, um, see everything by just looking at the matrix. And maybe it's even higher dimensional. So maybe you have more dimensions. So you have four I in range uh, 10, then you have four J in range uh, 10. And then you have four K in range 10 and so on. And you have nested loops inside of nested loops. And then of course, it's not so easy to spot values right away. But let's say we're looking now here for the number 11. And when we find the number 11, we want to break out, we don't want to continue searching for anything, because we already found what we're looking for. So we're only looking for the number 11, nothing else. Now, what we could do here is we could say for row in matrix. Um, so we're basically iterating over the individual rows and inside of that rows, we have columns or elements. So we're going to say for element in row. And now we're going to just see if the element is equal to oops, if the element is equal to 11, we're going to just print found 11 terminating search or yeah, terminating maybe quitting search or something like that. That is the idea. And we want to now say, um, once the 11 is found, I don't want to continue to search anymore. So how do I break out of the loop? Because if I just say break here, it's just going to continue to look for the other rows, it's just going to stop looking for elements in this particular row. So you can see that this is the case, I'm going to print here, each element. What would happen here is, it would say one, two, three, four, five, and so on up until 11, then it found 11. Since it found 11, and it breaks out of the loop here, it doesn't find 12 anymore, because it breaks out of the row, we're breaking out of this loop, we're not looking for any more elements in the row, but it continues to look for 11 in the other rows. 
And if we have more rows, this is unnecessary because it wastes a lot of time and resources. So again, remember our structure here is to just say else continue and then to break in the end here. And this gives us the result that we want. Found 11, quitting search. Because again, let me explain again, we're looking for rows in the matrix. Inside of the row, we're looking for elements or we're iterating over rows, we're iterating over elements. And if the element is 11, we break out of the inner loop. Because we break out of the inner loop, it doesn't get into the else branch. We don't continue to the next iteration, which means we execute this code here, which means we break out of the outer loop as well. If we don't find 11, if we find seven, for example, we don't break out of the loop because we don't break out of the loop, this else branch is triggered. We continue causing immediately the next iteration. We don't reach this point here and we continue as long as we break or until we break out of the loop because then we break also out of the outer loop. And this is how you professionally break out of nested loops in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.